Look at that, just six kilometers on the clock. It's the summer of 2016. I went down to Paraguay to visit the family and bought another motorcycle. I thought I had great adventures by bus and bicycle, but the Kenton GL150 opened up a totally new world. Spectacular. Sure, you could buy a Sky or a Scott or a GT bicycle for, well, exactly the same price in Paraguay, but don't. Go for the motorcycle. All right, first impressions. This is the first day. Just brought it home from the uh, Casa Central and uh, took the ride out to Grandma's house, which is like 35 kilometers out and 35 kilometers back. Had the Kickstarter fall off at about 47 kilometers. Super happy about that. So that's the Kickstarter. It's where it's supposed to be. It's what it's supposed to look like. Se cayó y escuché. Escuché por la calle, mira. Bueno, sí. Se cayó eso. De ahí, ¿quién es? ¿Ustedes pueden llevar esto a casa? Bueno. Gracias. Con tal de que no necesites. No. Bueno, espero que no. Si, si necesito, voy a llevar de, de papá. Eh, sí, sí, está bien. There is no license plate on it. This thing has no anything. It's not official. It was purchased by my father-in-law. He was riding with me, so I figure it was kind of legal. We passed through two checkpoints. They have police checkpoints all over the place down here. Commonly, it's a Saturday. Passed through one on the way out, one on the way back. Police just waved us through. Everything was great, but it's got uh, 70 kilometers on it. It's uh, running well. I'm not supposed to take it over 60 kilometers per hour. And uh, something else. I'm not allowed to carry a passenger for 500 kilometers. So at 500 kilometers, I go and I get the uh, first oil change and quick checkup. I'm going to have to do some tightening of bolts because obviously stuff fell off already, but it's fabulous. Perhaps even a better experience than the first time. Good stuff. To promote helmet use, they include a helmet which is actually too big for me and my head is gigantic. And they include your first quart of oil, because that's all it takes for an oil change. We have ANSI and Snell standards. They have something from Brazil. And there's reflective tape all over the helmet. I've been doing this for years on my bicycles, motorcycles, and helmets. It's a great idea. Dos motos en la casa otra vez. Que gusto, ¿verdad, papi? Que gusto. El rojo. Te gusta este color nuevo. Here they are. Great looking pair. Back in 2013, I bought the first one. And 2016, I bought the next one. Links in the description below for the full adventure. These things are light, nimble, and fun. The LED taillight's a new thing, but the angle's totally wrong. It's actually kind of pointed down toward the ground. Can't really see it from that picture, but it's the bad angle. So I shimmed it up with a few washers to bring it up closer so maybe people can see when I'm braking. Kenton. Kenton. Heel hydraulic suspension system. Front and rear drum brakes. Front is cable operated. Speedometer cable comes off the front too. Six dollar bulb for this headlight. It's not exactly strong. Turn signals on stalks with bulbs. Little Mickey Mouse mirrors. Warnings on the tank, wear your helmet, conserve nature, always wear your helmet, drive with caution, and read the manual carefully before driving the dumb thing. I wish my big boy motorcycle that I have here had a gear indicator like this one. It's got a fully enclosed chain to protect it from all the sand around here. That usually comes off pretty quickly. Recommended free play of 15 millimeters. It's got a steering lock, so it's a little bit more difficult to walk away with the motorcycle. And remember, every time you get angry at a detail, the thing costs $800 new from the factory. There's the carburetor, and that is the idle screw. Front lever for downshifts, rear lever for upshifts, so you don't mess up your shoes. You can turn off the headlight, by the way, which a lot of people do. Being invisible in traffic's a good thing, right? High beam, low beam, turn signals. You can't push it into cancel, you have to move it to the center. And that's the horn. Fuel tank shutoff and reserve valve. Inline fuel filter with a fuel line that's way too long. And the choke. Hardly ever use it once you learn how to run this thing. 
on a morning in the deepest winter day when it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit. You may use that choke, but generally it's turn the key, hit the starter button with a little quick twist of the throttle, and you're going. Has to be a neutral to start it. It stalls a lot at first. Once you get this thing running, it seems to be pretty reliable. Like a Fred said one time, ah, good compression. <laughs> fuel line's too long and it's at the wrong angle and it's kinked, so it'll starve itself for fuel at high speeds. You'll probably run out of gas. Yeah, it's tiny, but I'm 6'5", so it looks tinier. Maybe you could make the run to Encarnacion. Maybe on the way back, you have to get that thing welded because it breaks. But no matter what, if you want adventures in Paraguay, this is the motorcycle you gotta buy. La moto Kenton, GL150. La moto Cobrador, espectacular. Buenas noches, motos.